I want to start to rig the left arm. And before I do that, I got to hide all of my geometry for my character. So go ahead and highlight all the mesh. Then at the very bottom of the channels box is our layers section. And the very last icon here, what this will do is this will add all the geometry that is selected to a new layer. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that, make a new layer. And the little V here is for visibility. That'll toggle the visibility on and off. Now I could also double click on the text here and rename this so I could call it whatever the name of my character is and hit save. Now I can turn off his mesh or hide it for now. I'm going to zoom in on the arm. I need to add IK to this arm. So let's go to the rigging drop down and then go to skeleton and create IK handle, but make sure you click on the option box. By default, you're probably going to be set to the current solver as a single chain solver, and we don't need that. We actually need to click on the drop down and choose rotate plane solver. The rotate plane solver will allow for the elbows to rotate up and down. Next, I'm going to click on the shoulder joint, skip the elbow, and then click on the wrist. This creates our IK chain. And though I don't want you to move it out of position, if you click and drag on the IK that you just created, you'll see that we can now animate the hand moving around and the elbow kind of animates for us. I'm going to undo any of my movement. I should label this IK chain, lowercase i, lowercase k, underscore, capital L, underscore, wrist. Now we need to draw one more IK chain in here. And this IK chain is going to go from the wrist to the palm joint. We're going to go up to skeleton up at the top, create IK handle option box, and this time, with Rotate Plane Solver, I don't want to rotate this IK chain. I'm going to use a single chain solver. I'm going to click on the wrist joint, and then I'm going to click on the palm joint. And I should label this IK, lowercase IK, underscore, capital L, underscore, palm. Now I need to create a control object for the arm. So I'm going to go up to create up at the top, NURBS primitives, and circle. This creates a little NURB circle that does not render down at the center of the world. If I hold down V, I should be able to click and drag on it and snap it to my wrist joint. I should name this CTRL underscore capital L underscore wrist. I need to adjust this gizmo so that it's pretty much the same orientation as the arm. And I also want to make sure that it's sitting at 0, 0, 0. So we have to do a little bit of work with this piece. First of all, if I right click on it and go to Control Vertex, this will allow me to highlight these points, these control points going around my circle. So if you're having a hard time selecting control points, it's because the, the joints always get selected ahead of time. So if I just turn off up at the top, if you turn off your joint selection, it should be a little bit easier. But with this, what I can do is I can scale this ring up. I may want to take a look at the size of my character's arms. I may want to make that a little bit bigger. And I can also rotate these. Orient that with the rest of the body. When I'm done, I'm going to right click and hold, go to object mode, reselect it. And we can go up to the top. We can go to modify, freeze transformations. And what this will do is it adds a controller on top of my translate XYZ. And it lists that controller as 000. So if I ever want to return my character back to its initial position, I can just zero everything out for the controller. Now I'm going to turn my mesh off, and we have to do some parenting here. The IK chain for the wrist 
needs to be a child of the control object. So I'm going to highlight the IK chain for the wrist and then shift select the control circle and hit P to parent. I'm also going to take the IK chain for IK palm, hold shift, select the control wrist circle that we just created and hit P. And what this allows me to do is now this control object, if I were to move it, it takes the hand. And if I were to rotate it, it will rotate the hand. But you'll see here we get some goofy action on that elbow and I gotta fix that as well. So I'm gonna undo my movement, but everything's working so far. We have to create a control object for the elbow. And we do this by going up to create and then choosing locator. A locator also does not render, so it's another object that we can use to animate and we don't have to worry about it. So I'm going to hold down V and I'm going to snap this to the elbow. After I snap it to the elbow, I'm going to push it back here on Z so it's sitting behind the character's arm. That way it's perfectly aligned with the elbow, but it's, it's pushed back a little bit. So with the locator highlighted, I'm going to then select my IK chain. And up at the top, we can go to Constrain and Pull Vector. And what Pull Vector does is it allows me to control the direction that the elbow is going to point. So if I bend the arm, the elbow is always going to point towards this pull vector so I can control which direction I'm aiming. So I also need to name this CTRL for control object underscore capital L underscore and elbow. Unfortunately rigging cannot be copied or mirrored to the other side. But what we can do is we can borrow some of the objects to help make this a little bit easier. For example, I can take the control wrist and we can duplicate it. Edit, duplicate, and I can copy that and place it, hold down V and snap it to the other wrist. My only problem is I need to right click and go to control vertex. highlight all those pieces and then let's rotate that until it matches up. When I'm done I can right click object mode and reselect it no problem. I can also take that object and go up to modify and freeze transformations and I should rename it. It should not be control wrist L. It should be control R wrist. Now the elbow requires a little bit more work. I can snap to the other elbow so that'll be perfect but I have to keep track of my Z position. Right now my Z is a negative 16.7. I'm gonna make that a little bit easier for me to remember. I'm gonna just type in negative 16. But I'm gonna duplicate this. Edit Duplicate, hold V, and snap it to the other elbow. Now I know I can type in for translate Z, negative 16, and now they're perfectly even. I need to draw the IK chains for the other arm. So we're going to go up to Skeleton, Create IK Handle, IK Option Box, and I'm going to choose the Rotate Plane Solver. I'm going to click on the shoulder, skip the elbow, and then click on the wrist. Now I need to label this IK underscore R underscore wrist. I need to put another IK chain in here. Go up to Skeleton, Create IK Handles, IK Option Box, and change the current solver to Single Chain Solver. Click on the wrist joint and then the palm joint. We can call this IK R palm. 
Now we need to parent these IK chains to the control wrist object. So I should be able to hold shift and select both of my IK chains. Hold shift and select the control wrist. The control wrist object has to be selected last. Then I can go up to edit and parent or hit P. I usually like to double check these connections to make sure they're working, but then make sure to control Z and undo any movement. Now I need to link the control elbow which also needs to be renamed. Call this control R elbow. I need to make sure we have the pull vector set up. So I'll highlight the control R elbow, then highlight the IK chain, IK wrist, and then we can go up to constrain and pull vector. Both of these troll elbows here they're sitting at some strange numbers. So I want to even those out so we can go up to modify and freeze transformations. I didn't do that earlier because I wanted to make sure I could copy the translate Z value. Now if I want to return these objects to their initial start position, all I have to do is zero them out. 